الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Clubhouse family how are you guys doing today Clubhouse ما شاء الله الله مبارك We're a clubhouse family in the building man How are you guys ما شاء الله ما شاء الله the people that are watching this on YouTube are feeling so sad that they can't be a part of the Clubhouse family. Does anyone want to give them an invitation so they can get onto Clubhouse and join the family? <laughs> or are you already giving your, giving your invitations out? You guys are serious people, man. Allah Barry. So for those of you who are new, just to remind you of, of the process, what we're doing is we're going through... We're going through a reminder every day here on Clubhouse that's recorded and put on YouTube. It's, about thir- it's, about, it's, it's, it's called the 30 Days of Change. This is for people who are not really on their dean or they're trying to get on their dean, they're trying to improve themselves. And in these 30 days, I'm talking to you, I'm trying to have a real life conversation with you so that inshallah ta'ala, at the end of these 30 days, you can make a change. You can make a significant change in your life. Okay. So my only one request is that if you start the session, you've got to stay with me to the end. So put your hand up if you're going to be here and stay to the end. It's not going to be very long, maybe about 10 minutes inshallah. But I need to know you guys are going to be here till the very end. Right, everyone put your hands up if you're gonna do that, inshallah ta'ala. Cool. So today, inshallah ta'ala, I titled the clubhouse room, I titled it Tipsy Off of Life. Tipsy off of life. Now, what does it mean to be tipsy? Tipsy is to be intoxicated, to be drunk, to be losing your consciousness, right? So um I want to talk to you about the seriousness of 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 intoxicants, of drugs and alcohol. Now, some of you might be sitting there thinking. I don't take drugs and I don't take alcohol. That's not really my my concern. Uh, some of you may even be like practicing with you know beards, Allah Badik, and wearing niqabs. You think, you know, I don't, I don't, I definitely don't do drugs, Allah Badik. I still want you to listen. You know why? Because even though you may not do drugs, but some of you still act like you take drugs, and some of you still have the effect of drugs, even though you don't take it. So listen. Listen, inshallah ta'ala, because you're gonna see when we end, it's gonna be a lot more relevant to you than you might think. So when it comes to alcohol in the Quran, Allah Jal told us, Ya you Haladina Amanu in the Melchamr will Maysir will Ansab will Islam will Rijism in Amel Rijism in Amel Shaytan, Fajit and Ibu Lala come to Flihun. Allah said, Oh, you who believe, stay away from, stay away from alcohol. Stay away from alcohol, stay away from gambling, stay away from these intoxicants. Alcohol is basically an intoxicant, and the reason why it becomes haram is because of the, because of the iskar in it, meaning the intoxicant element. So, even though the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't mention cocaine, cocaine comes under it. And so does weed. Anything that gets you high, anything that gets you buzzing, anything that gets you tipsy, gets you high, gets you, gets you, you know, gets you intoxicated. Any of these things, they take the same ruling as alcohol. Because the reason why alcohol is made haram is not because of the taste. No. There's wine in paradise. There's wine in paradise. It's because it intoxicates you. So Allah told you it's haram and stay away from it. And stay away from it if you want to be successful. Meaning a person who sells drugs can't be successful. Why do you sell drugs to be successful? But if you sell drugs, you can't be successful. Do you understand? Because Allah told you success is in staying away from this. Nor can you find success in taking it. People say, oh, I take it so I can sober up. I can calm down, get away from the difficulties in my life. No, it's going to make it worse. Now, one time Uthman radiyallahu anhu, who was the sahabi of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and a khalifa, he, after Prophet Ali died, after Abu Bakr died, after Umar died, Uthman took over. عنه, so Uthman gave a khutbah to the people, he gave a sermon. And in the sermon, he told the people a story of a man who was very righteous. And there was a woman who fell in love with this man. And this woman was extremely beautiful. Okay, She was extremely beautiful, extremely beautiful. And she fell in love with this righteous, righteous man who's always worshipping Allah and doing khair. So what she did is she sent her slave girl and said to the man, sent her slave girl out to the man so that the man could come to her. And the way that she drew the man in is like, you know, saying something like, you know, uh, the slave girl said, look, so-and-so needs your help. Are you able to come and help? So they lured him in by getting him to come and help. Him being a righteous man is like, someone needs help. Well, okay, inshallah, I mean, I'll try and, you know, whatever have you. So where is the help needed? So she takes him into the house. Now when she takes him into the house She locks She locks the door 
And when you go deeper in the house, she locks another door. And when you go deeper into the house still, she locks another door. So he's thinking, why is this lady, why is this slave girl just locking every door? Like every door she's locking. He didn't realize she was trapping him inside of the house. Until finally he got into the inner sanctions, the inner part of the house. Guess what? This beautiful woman appears. And this woman appears holding a cup of alcohol. And she's got a young boy there. She looks at the man and says, listen, I want to sleep with you. I want you. This beautiful one wants this righteous man. She's like, I want you. I want you. She fell in love. She became infatuated. She fell. She became obsessed with this man. She said, I'm not letting you go. And if you want to go, you're going to either sleep with me and then I'll let you go. You're either going to fornicate with me. And I'll let you go. Or you have to drink this alcohol. Or you kill this boy. You kill this boy. You have to kill this boy. If you kill the boy, you don't have to sleep with me. If you drink the alcohol, you don't have to sleep with me. If you sleep with me, you don't have to kill the boy or drink the alcohol. But you're going to do one of the three. And if you don't do one of the three, I'm not going to let you go. So the guy looks around realizing, yo, I'm trapped. I actually can't get out of here. I fully can't get out of here. I'm stuck. Does that make sense? So what does he do in that situation? And that's time I want to ask you a question. What would you think is the lesser of all of the three evils? At this point, we would think that the lesser of all three evils is what? We would think is to just drink the cup of alcohol, right? Put your hand up if you think that that would be the lesser of three evils. Just, you know what? Okay, I'm not going to murder. No, I'm going to fornicate. <sighs> Let me just drink this one cup and then I'll be out. That's what a lot of us would think, right? But your hand up if you think that that's the case. That's how most people's mind would think. You're not, you guys not trying to engage with me? I'm saying put your hands up if you think that. Or maybe you don't think it. Okay, you think it, right? Good. So that's what we think. So that's what the guy thought. So you know what the guy did? He said, you know what? Okay, give me the cup of alcohol and then, and then, and then let, me get, let me get my way out of here. So when he, when he drank the one cup, what happened? He got tipsy. When he drank the one cup, he got tipsy. So when you get tipsy, what happens? I used to say, hey, yo, pour me some more. So she got a jug. She started pouring for him. He's knocking it back. Knocking it back. Knocking it back. You see how that one led to him drinking more until he got smashed. He got drunk. He got, as they say, licked. He was licked out of his head. Does that make sense? He was gone. He was drunk, intoxicated. So when he got intoxicated, what did he do? What do people do when they get intoxicated? What do, what, do people, what do these guys in a club do? How are they able to just fornicate and have one night stand? How is a woman in her right mind able to have a one night stand with a guy knowing that he's going to basically abuse her and just leave her? They call it mash and dash. He's going to mash and just dash her. He's going to do the deed with her, the evil deed, and then he's just going to leave her. Just dash her away. You'll get away. She's drunk. No self-respecting woman would do that. Guys behaving like animals when they're drunk. So when he's drunk, he now sleeps with her. And when people get drunk, they don't just fornicate. They also get angry and they get violent. So he kills the boy as well. So in his drunkard state, he actually did all three. So that's why Uthman, he told this story. And then at the end, he mentioned that Al-Khamr is Ummul Khaba'ith. He said this intoxication, this alcohol or these drugs, they are the mother of all filth. They're the mother of all sins because people, people kill when they're drunk. People kill when they're high. People kill when they're intoxicated. You know this, this, this knife crime and whatnot that we hear about? These kids, a lot of you think, how did you just shank a man in the neck over a jacket, over this, over that, and they're just killing people? They're drunk. They're high. They licked a lot of them. They, they, they're not with it. People do these sins when they're drunk. Now, that shows you the danger of evil, the, the, the danger of this, right? Now, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Why am I telling you this? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of you are not high right now and most of you are not drunk right now. So what does this have to do with you? What it has to do with you is because <clears throat> of another verse. And I'm going to link it back to this. So I'm going to move away from the point about being drunk and I'm going to come back to it in a second. So you have to understand something. Initially, alcohol wasn't haram. The reason why alcohol wasn't haram initially is because the Arabs, they were very obsessed with alcohol. 
And they would never sit on a table except alcohol would be there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that these people, they are not, is going they wouldn't leave the alcohol straight away. So Allah wanted to build their iman, build their relationship with Allah. So that when Allah tells them alcohol is haram, they're able to leave it. Because imagine going to a non-Muslim guy and you say to a non-Muslim, yo, you can't drink alcohol. Imagine that's the first thing you tell him. Is he going to accept Islam? Is he going to accept Islam? No, because... I mean, and, and there are more important things that he needs to do anyway. He needs, he, needs, he needs to save himself from shirk and kufr and disbelief, right? Before the alcohol, right? So so you tell him about the most important things first. And then you say to him after, okay, by the way, alcohol is haram too. So initially alcohol wasn't made haram. It wasn't initially made haram. But what Allah did make haram was coming to the salah. But rather what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did prohibit them from was coming to the salah drunk. Allah didn't make it all haram at the beginning, but He said, don't come to the salah drunk. Allah said, Ya ayyuhu alladhina amanu, la taqrabu salata wa antum sukara. Allah said, don't come to the salah when you're drunk. Why? Because you're praying five times a day. So this is now disconnecting you from, from drinking as comfortably and easily as you want. Because the salah is obligatory, you know you got to play the salah, but you can't come to the salah drunk. Now, why am I telling you this? Because as for us, no one can now say, wait, alcohol is not yet haram yet, you know, or do we have a choice or do we? No, no, it's haram today. Because after that, Allah made it haram. But there's a benefit in this. Because there's a, why did Allah tell them not to come to the salah drunk? Allah said, don't come to the salah drunk. Until you know what you're saying. Pay attention, the one who's drunk doesn't know what he's saying in salah. He's not able to focus. He's not able to connect with Allah. He's distracted. The one who is in the salah and he's drunk is distracted. His mind is distracted. He's not with it. Can he focus in his salah? Can he connect with Allah in his salah? No, he can't because he's drunk. Pay attention. Allah told them not to come to the salah drunk. Because they can't understand what they're saying. And so until they're able to understand what they're saying, don't come to Salah. Until, they, until you sober up, basically. Pay attention. Some of us have never smoked a spliff in our life. We never took a zoo. We never smoked any, 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 any drug. We never, we never drank any alcohol. Or maybe we did, but we stopped. Pay attention. Some of us come to the Salah. And we're still drunk. We're still not focused. Despite not taking drugs. Despite not taking drugs or alcohol. We're still intoxicated. Intoxicated with the dunya. A person comes to the salah and his mind is distracted with social media. Distracted with his girl. Distracted with the dunya. Distracted with the world. Imagine that. Alcohol. They were prohibited from praying. From drinking the alcohol. Because, because Allah actually said, you know, in the ayah where Allah prohibited alcohol, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إنما يريد الشيطان أن يقع بينكم العداوة والبغضاء في الخمر والميسر والميسر ويصدكم عن ذكر الله وعن الصلاة. He wants to take you away from remembering Allah and the prayer. Shaitan, through alcohol, wants to take you away from remembering Allah and he wants to take you away from the prayer. This is so, it's so deep and this is so profound. This is so deep and this is so profound that the alcohol is what's gonna the drug's gonna take you away from the salah. Pay attention. Some of you don't drink and some of you don't smoke. Some of you don't sniff. Some of you don't inject. Alhamdulillah. But some of you might even be just as or not just as, but maybe close to being as drunk, as high of the world. How sad is that? How sad is that? That we are not able to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Because we're too distracted by the dunya So, okay, well how do you overcome this distraction? How do you wake up? How do you get over this heedlessness? You have to get to know how low the dunya is that's distracting you And you have to get to know how great Allah is Subhanahu wa ta'ala The one who The one who is calling you to this act of worship for that reason, my brothers and sisters, you need to seek knowledge. Because seeking knowledge is the thing that is going to show you the greatness of Allah and the not-so-greatness of the dunya. That's what Imam Ibn Qayyim said. Every time 
you get to know the creator more, you pick the creation less. I repeat, every time you get to know knowledge, know the creator more, you will choose the creation less until you're able to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in servitude and submission. Now at this time, some of you may ask, well, where can I seek knowledge? Where can I learn about the greatness of Allah? Uh, we have a five-year Islamic studies program that inshallah ta'ala is starting right after Ramadan. The first class got packed out, so packed out that the demand was so much we had to open up another class. Uh, if you'd like to gain access to the class and you'd want more information, then join the Telegram group at the link below. There's a Telegram group that will take you to a page that tells you about that five-year Islamic studies program, inshallah ta'ala. And hopefully there, bi'idhni lai ta'ala, you can see um, you know, more information on this and you can get to know Allah, your king, my king, our king, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can stop being tipsy of a life and start being firm and conscious in our deen. With that said, my lovely people, I'm going to see you tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته